Today we're going to talk about subtitles. I do a lot of videos related to Plex and you'll see I have a movie that I recently acquired. I have two versions of it. I have a small 2.4 gigabyte version and I have an 8.8 .8 gigabyte version along with three subtitles named to match the smaller size. So if you're someone who's using Kodi or you're using an app on Android TV or a Fire TV um, that might work well with Real the Bread or Premiumize, Premiumize Me, you might be plagued with subtitle issues. Well, I want to tell you that if you look for larger file sizes to play, most likely you're going to have subtitles already embedded inside the container folder. Let me show you with this example. I'm going to open the file up in MKV Tool Nix, which is, is a neat program it does a lot of things if this video had 20 other subtitles I weren't interested in um, I could remove them if I did not want the French subtitle I could just unclick it and then click start multiplexing and and MKV tool Nix will save a new copy without that subtitle included sometimes subtitles are labeled incorrectly um, I could change the British to English and have it appear differently by opening it up in VLC. So let's remove this file and let's drag in my smaller file and you'll see inside the container, an MP4 is a container just like an MKV file, you'll see we only have the video and the audio track. We do not have any embedded subtitles. So usually larger size files have it, and smaller size ones do not have embedded subtitles. So this acquisition came through with three external subtitles that were not named properly. I had to name them as I would any other movie file or subtitle file on my Plex server. So Plex um, expects a movie to be named just like you'd see at IMDB or TMDB, the movie database, I added a little bit extra and I put the TMDB database number into the file name in a formula that Plex expects to see. And I use a utility called FileBot to do that and it also tells me some media characteristics. So I can just look at a file name and know what I have. It looks very similar to a release group, but formatted just as Plex would want it and not as a release group would do it with all kinds of um, periods and breaking things up. So this is a 1080p version. It's encoded with the H or the H or the X264 um, codec, six channel audio and the AAC format or this one's the EAC3 format. Um, and because I've named the subtitle files properly, any media player Plex included is going to know how to display those. The default one, we just do an extension flag of ENG, and then the hearing impaired, we do an extension flag of ENG.SDH. For Plex, this could also be .HI. And then for the foreign language audio sections, we label it .ENG.Forced. And if I open that up and stop it real quick so we don't get a copyright strike, you'll see in VLC, I can go and it shows all three subtitles and the forced one is loading by default. Now we, we saw that this version of the movie had embedded subtitles and VLC also picks them, picks them up. And if I wanted to use MKV Toolnix to change British to English, I could have done that there. Um, the, the larger files not going on my server, I collected a smaller level, so I just grabbed it as a demo for this video. So basically, if you're using Real Debread or Real Debris, however you want to say it, or Premiumize Me with any app or any add-on, look for a larger file size, and most likely it's going to have any necessary embedded subtitles in it. If it doesn't, just look for another large file size. 720p, if you get above 3 or 4 gigabytes, you're safe. 1080p, you know, look for 5, 6, 7, 8 gigabytes or larger. Um, anything small, 2 gigabytes, 
is not going to have embedded subtitles most likely. So anyway, that's the little subtitle video. Hopefully it'll be helpful to the person I'm trying to help in an NVIDIA Shield TV users group. But it's just kind of good general advice if you use those special streaming apps or those special streaming, streaming add-ons with Kodi. Larger is better for subtitles. Um, oh, I, I wanted to show one more thing. So this movie just came out, just got released by the scene. I grabbed it this morning. I prefer subscene over open subtitles, but FileBot will reach out automatically to open subtitles and grab a subtitle as it renames if I really need one. But I'd rather get them manually from subscene and, and then prep them myself. Well, as you notice, nothing listed here talks about anything with a forced or foreign audio subtitle or a hearing impaired SDH or an HI subtitle. Most likely, these are all just the default subtitles. And if you're, if you're trying to use open subtitles with a player app to reach out, you might want to take note of which release group's video you loaded when, when you got your results back. If you, if you noticed a certain release group's name, you might want to see if you can find that as a subtitle if you're manually searching for one. But again, it's just easier to start with a bigger file, which probably has the embedded ones in any way. Um, and like this is a re recently released movie. Eventually, this will be released on Blu-ray. So then the scene will release a Blu-ray rip of it. Generally, they're, they're usually the same, the same runtime. But maybe the Blu-ray one, by the time it's released, they might have put back in a couple scenes for whatever reason. And that'll make a slightly longer runtime. And of course, this, the new subtitles for that Blu ray release will be out of sync with the web release. Just like if you tried to use the web release subtitles on that later Blu ray one, they won't match up. And if a movie gets re released as an extended version, well, that's out there in the scene too. And if it's just come out, the extended version, only the earlier regular web release or the Blu-ray release may be what's propagated out there in the subtitle site. So everything takes a while. So it, it really leads back to trying to grab the, the, the larger size file that most likely will have the embedded subtitles in it. And I'll show you that one last time. Already in the container file. So that's the best. I hope this is helpful and I hope you learned something about subtitles.